let's make some clover flowers. I'm using 22 gauge wire. I'm using white wire, but green wire would work just as well. And for this one, I'm going to cut the wires into thirds. I like to have a little bit of stem on them. I'm going to cut these into thirds. They're a stiffer wire. I have to use my boot strength here. There we go. And for this one, I'm going to make a little hook in the one end of the wire. So I'm going to take a pair of tweezers and just make a small little hook there. That helps hold the gum paste ball that we're going to insert in it. So again, you just take one end, fold over. It doesn't have to be a tight hook. It can be a loose hook. It's probably about eighth of an inch, the hook length. All right. Now we're going to start with green, even though when you look at the clover, it's white. Inside of it, it's green. So we're going to start with green, and I've got some light green gum paste. I'm going to put a little bit of vegetable shortening on it so I can make it a little more pliable and working. And I'm going to roll it into a ball. Now this piece is about one and a half centimeters, one and a half centimeters, or a half inch if you're working there. And don't worry if there's little grooves in there. If there's little cracks in your ball, we're not going to see it, so it's not worth making it perfectly smooth. You just want to get it into kind of a roundish shape. Dip the hooked end of your wire into gum glue. Tap off the excess. And then we're going to press it up into the ball, about two-thirds of the way into the ball. Give it a little pinch down here at the bottom to secure it. So it looks like a little balloon. Now I'm going to leave this for about 10 to 15 minutes. It's going to dry somewhat or come a little bit tighter around the wire. And so what I usually do is I make about a dozen of these and then by the time I'm done with that, I'm ready to move on to the next step. Now that we have our bases done, let's complete the, the clover flower. And what I'm going to do is take a little piece of white gum paste. It's probably about a centimeter, half inch round piece. Rub a little vegetable shortening into it to get it pliable. I'm going to put it on my rolling surface, my non-stick board. And using a rolling pin, I'm just going to flatten it out into a round shape, maybe about eighth of an inch thick. And um, looks to be about an inch and a half in diameter, or three centimeters thereabouts. <clears throat> it's ready to go. I'll take one of my bases. It's, still, it's a little firm here, but it's still soft. And I'm going to take a little gum glue on a small brush, not excess. I'll kind of drip off the excess. And I'm going to lightly brush along the top two-thirds of the clover base. And then just give a little swipe at the base, just a very small one. Not too much gum glue down here at all, just a glisten. I'm going to set the base on top like this and fold the white paste around. And you'll notice that it doesn't cover it, which is okay because this, this excess that's bunching up here, we're going to press in and around and it will expand and stretch to fit the entire green base. So that way we don't have a whole lot of excess going on. So I'm just pinching and I'm holding it by this green base primarily with the white covering it. 
and you can see as I pinch it towards the wire that all starts to smooth out. I'm going to pinch it down, still holding it by the base to a real sort of balloon looking shape here. And for the time being, I'm going to keep this little excess down here. It will help keep the shape secure on the wire while I do my cutting. So then you can go back and mold it into more of a round if you want it to be a round glo globe shape or if you want it to elongate it a little bit into more of a bit of an oval shape. It's all up to, to you. I'll go somewhere in between here. Now for the clipping, I have two pairs of scissors to show you. These are um, small scissors. These are spring action scissors, so they expand to a certain width and then they snap back once you snip. Makes it easy to make when you're making a lot of cuts. And these are little embroidery scissors that I got at the craft shop for about four US dollars. And they're nice and sharp. You can get some real expensive ones, but these work just fine and, and they, they are very sharp. You just want to make sure they're clean. As I've been using them, you'll see here on the scissors is some debris, gum paste debris on there. So I have a little bit of a dis dis food disinfectant wipe. I'm just going to wipe that off because that excess gum paste will catch on to my shape here. So um, make sure that everything stays pretty clean in between, in between your flowers. I'll show you use, how to use both of them. Um, the one, this one, Spring Action, will make long slender cuts because it, it'll only expand one width. And that's sort of this one. So if you're looking for a that kind of shape, and that's really pretty, I love it. It's a lot of little cuts, um, but it'll make these sort of short, narrow, spiky clover petals. This one makes it a little bit wider and puffier because I can separate the tines of the scissors a little bit more. So I'll, st I'll do both. I'm going to start with the, the spring action. I'm going to press the pointed parts of the scissors towards the wire, set it in, and snip. And what I do is I set in, snip, and pull up so that it causes the petal to kind of break away there. So you can see how that's scooted short and spiky, short and spiky. And then I'll go in with these scissors and you can see these are making kind of wider, much wider than the, the first ones that I did. Which is what I'm kind of going for here. So I'll go all the way around and then I'm going to go in between and start to spiral my way up the clover. And I'm trying to be sure that I don't line the petals up so much that they sort of sit in between each other as I work my way up. And once you get through about five or six of these, then you, you'll feel more confident to go faster. But in the beginning, give yourself the the time to to make snips and if they start to look like they're they're lining up maybe throw one off kilter and then make some more and I'm still holding it primarily down here at this base if you hold it by the wire it's more likely to pull off the wire And working my way up, and as I get a little bit more up towards the the top, then I will start to hold it at the wire and the base, just so I'm not pressing in all the petals that I've already done. Now up here at the top, what I'm going to do is angle the the base of my scissors in towards the center, and that way. I can take it to more of a little point at the top of the flower. Don't worry if you lose a petal here and there, it's okay. You got plenty of them for sure. 
and I'm here at the top. There we are. Now once I've gotten all, all the way up here to the top, I want to open up a few of these little petals. I like to use the narrow end of the Dresden tool to do this. One other thing is as you, as you cut, you might find that your ball is maybe not sitting so far into the wire anymore. And you can, you can push it down at this point. So if you feel like it's sort of dangling off the edge of the hook, feel free to push it down to a more stable position. So here at the bottom, I'm just going to open up a few of these petals. Give them a little life. And you can see the green shining through. Isn't that pretty? The green shining. And then down here at the bottom, and then clean that up a little bit. We are going to put a calyx on there, but um, I just want to clean it up a little before I go. So I'm going to pull a few of these petals. Come here, you. Down. That was one of the first ones that we did, the spiky ones. There's another one. So you can see it's all completed. And I'm going to set him in a little tray. I have a tray here with some others done. And what I've done with this is, is a block of styrofoam. And I've taken some coffee straws, cut them in half, and inserted them into the styrofoam. These are great for thin wires. So especially for something um, like the leaves, which we're going to be doing next, if I wanted to support the leaves, I could put them in here. Pushing a 28 gauge wire into styrofoam is always really tricky. Um, but these make great little petal holders. They keep them separated from each other so that your flowers aren't falling all over each other. So I'm going to let these guys dry and then we'll dust them up and add a calyx. Now we're going to dust the clover flowers. Um, we want, I've let these dry for about two hours. You want them to be a bit dry so that the petals are not so fragile and will break off. I'm putting on yellow paper because I usually dust on, on white toweling, but you can't see very well there. So I've got this on yellow paper so that you can see how I'm dusting. You can make these uh, white or um, kind of a pinkish color. Those are the two color clo colors of clover flowers that I've come across. Uh, today I'm going to use, for the white ones, I'm going to use some Super Pearl. <clears throat> Super Pearl has a little bit of shine to it, you can see. Um, and it's not white, but it's a little bit antique white, so it adds a nice little color little color to it. I'm going to use a soft wide brush um, as I brush them and I'm not going to add a lot of pressure to it. I'm just going to tap it and going both directions up towards the center and back down towards the base going all around. Now I have this cool little tool. If you have one of these it's a pump brush where the super pearl is actually in the brush in the brush handle and you use a little pump to feed it into the brush and it brushes them for you. It makes for something like Super Pearl, I use Super Pearl a lot. It makes it it was worth it. It was worth to buy it and just have it on hand and ready to go. But if you don't have the, the pump brush, then go ahead and use a little brush and I'm more like dabbing, definitely no pressure. And that's all it, it really needs. Now for excess, if you have some excess dust, what you can do to get rid of that is you can blow on it, which some people find kind of disgusting, or you can use an empty plastic squirt bottle like they use for ketchup or for um, decorating plates a lot. You'll use that in restaurants. But this is an empty one and you just spray don't spray near your dust or you'll get dust everywhere. You can spray everything and then it'll blow off the excess dust for you. So that's for the white one. And then for the, the um, pink one, 
what I do is I give it just a little bit of a once over with pearl just a little bit of dabbing with pearl just to give it some shine all over with it and the pink on clover flowers is not uniform it's not all over the flower it's actually in sections so I'm going to take a little bit this is raspberry this is the color raspberry and I like it because it's pink Let's see if we can get it on the paper it's pink but it's also got a little bit of purpley tone to it it's a deep deep pink and what I usually do is take some on my this is another soft white brush put it on paper toweling to dab off the excess and then brush on. Now because this is in this is not completely dry yet, these the flower, it will absorb the color better. Once your flowers, gum paste flowers are completely dry, they just don't absorb the color as well as um, a sort of dry or not dry at all gum paste flower. So you can see that just uh, that just took the color like almost immediately and it looks really really nice and same with the spray bottle you can spray off the color so take a look and those are your two color choices now you'll notice that the calyx isn't on yet I like to dust these before I put the calyx on there so that when the calyx does go on it's nice and clean and it won't have any dust um, falling on it and disrupting its color. We will dust the calyx with a little bit of green. I usually wait until I dust the leaves to go for that. Now we're going to make the calyx for the clover flower. And I've got two cutters here. This one is a Hypericum Berry Calyx cutter. Kind of an odd shape petals around it. And it's about two centimeters long. The smaller one I've used also, it's a hyacinth flower cutter. And it's, I've used it when I've made smaller clover flowers. And I wanted to show you both of them because we're not all going to have the same cutters and there's no need to go buy tons of cutters for your collection. Little jasmine cutters, rose calyx cutters with the points cut off. All of those are going to be cut out. I'm using taking some green gum paste. Put a little veggie shortening in there. Loosen it up. And putting it down on my nonstick board, I'll roll it out to about a sixteenth of an inch. If you have a pasta machine that you like to roll your gum paste out, it's about a number four on a pasta machine. Put a little gum, a little cornstarch down here to keep it sliding around. I'm going to press down, go wiggle, wiggle. And then metal cutters especially seem to, to have some jagged edges to them. So I just run my finger over it to get a good clean cut there. And then I'll poke it out. That's the shape. Now I'm going to give this a little movement. So I'm going to take it on to my uh, soft side of the cell pad. And making sure that this won't catch on here, I'm going to dab it just a little bit on cornstarch because this gum paste feels soft, so I don't want it to tear the gum paste. I want it to slide. So I'm just going to slide into the center. Creates a little bit of an indentation. Get that. Looks kind of nice. And then I'm going to flip it over so the curved side is going to go down towards the, the bottom. I'm going to take a little bit of gum glue and brush the bottom of my, just a tiny bit, bottom of my clover flower. And I'll poke it in here, slide it up. 
And then from here, I'm going to give it a little bit of a pinch, just like that, so that these curl down. With my 28 gauge wire, I had cut it into uh, fourths. So the whole wire is about 15 inches long. Then I use some little wire cutters, and these are great because they have a little spring action on them. I'll cut them in half, and then in half again. And this will give me a nice length. They don't all have to be the the same length uh, to make the leaf to fit into the leaf, but not so long that I'm wasting wire as I, when I go to wire it onto a central. To stem. make the clover leaves, I'm going to use two cutters, a smaller one and a larger one that are both teardrop shape. If you look at this clover flower that I've made, the smaller ones are at the top, and the larger ones are on little stems of their own at the bottom. The smaller ones will usually be towards the top and then the larger ones you can do on their own stem in, cl in clusters. The clover flower is about two centimeters in length that I've made. My smaller leaf cutter is about two centimeters in length and not quite a centimeter at its lot as its widest width. The larger leaf is almost four centimeters in length and about two centimeters at its widest point down to about a centimeter at its, at its most narrow point. These two cutters are from the gem cutting set and they are actually rose petals cutters but what you, you don't need the cutter set, what you can do is just get some shapes that are kind of oval in shape, or you could even make your own template of a teardrop shape in the size that you require, and that'll work just fine. I'm using light green gum paste. I used Wilton's Moss Green to make a light green uh, color. I'm going to take a little bit of vegetable shortening and work it into the gum paste just to help it become more pliable. This is about um, about two to three centimeter ball of, of gum paste. And I like to use the grooved board. This is the smaller of Cell Cakes grooved boards. This is the one I learned on and so I'm more comfortable using it. So I'm going to roll this into a little bit of a ball and then to in a fat sausage and kind of like a little French bread, I'm going to start at the center and roll out so that the gum paste is across three of the ridges. Centering it in the ridges, I'm going to give it a little press down just to get it started. And then using my rolling pin in the center, I'm going to press down and roll away from me, come back to the center, press down and roll towards me. And I'll continue to do that until it gets to be about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I can tell that it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick on the groove board when I can just sort of barely see the ridges showing through here. And then I'll peel it away. So you can see that's about a sixteenth of an inch. If that gives you a good look at it. I'll flip over my board, flip over my gum paste so the ridge sides are up. And I'm going to try and get all six leaves out of this one roll. So I'm going to use the narrow side and pointy side down at the base of the ridge, center it, press down, and peel away. I give it a little wiggle just to get a clean cut. Now you can use a toothpick because uh, especially if you have a cutter like this that has a backing on it, it won't release very easily. So you can use a toothpick. I've got this little pointing tool that I'm going to use to, to press it out. And then because gum paste dries so quickly, I'm going to put it up underneath a flap. You can put it in a Ziploc bag. You can put it in underneath a sheet of plastic. 
Just anything to keep it from drying out. Green seems to dry out so quickly. So you want to really get that up underneath the flap. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So that it doesn't dry too much. Flap, and then I'm going to do my three small ones. Now, narrow side down. Then the ridge part, if you're using a grooved board, will be thinner, which is just perfect for these smaller leaves. They're so tiny, aren't they? There we go. Peeling away. Here's our last one. So that was handy. I like to get as many leaves out of a, out of a roll as possible because um, the gum paste, as you roll it, it, it gets more ex surface space exposed to air and dries out quicker. So up underneath the flap, up underneath the plastic flap for these. I'm going to start with a large leaf. A little bit easier to see. Those smaller ones are tiny. I'm using a 28 gauge wire. So you can see how thin that is. It's a very thin wire, which is nice. You don't need a lot of weight. These are small leaves. I'm going to dip it into my gum glue, just a little dip there, just to moisten the end of it. And I'll wipe the excess off on my hand. If that skews you out, you can wipe it on a piece of Kleenex or tissue or paper toweling. Here at this narrow end, I'm going to hold the gum paste leaf between my index finger or my middle finger and my thumb just to secure it and slide the wire up the ridge. It's kind of barely grazing my finger. About halfway up the leaf and then pinch here at the base just to keep it nice and secure. I have a wonderful secure. veiner here. It's an orchid leaf veiner. Let's see if you can get a good look at it. See all the nice ridges there? But it's a smaller one, so the ridges aren't so big and uh, out of proportion to the leaf. I'm going to put the leaf flat side down to imprint it. But Hera wanted to tell you that if you wanted to imprint both sides of the leaf and you just have a one-sided veiner, what I recommend that you do is you put it the ridge side down, which would be the back of the leaf. And then I'm going to take a cosmetic sponge, press down. And that'll imprint. And then flip over to the flat side of the leaf and press down again. That'll give it a double veined side if that's what you like. And then you can see press by pressing down I rubbed out quite a bit of the veining but it's still sort of visible and I have a nice veining over here on the flat side. I usually just do the flat side, but I wanted you to see that option in case you wanted to do that. I'm going to use the soft side of a cell pad. You could also use the thin Wilton um, boards. Nick Lodge has a wonderful board. This is the soft side that you could also use. I'm going to put this on my cell, my cell pad with the, the ridge side up. So all the nice veining is, uh, is facing the pad. And I'm going to use a little cell stick to just drag lightly along the edge of the leaf. Now you want to stay really on the edge and mostly on the foam board. Because if you get onto the leaf, onto the main part of the leaf, you're going to rub out your veining. All we're really looking to do here is not create any kind of curl or frill, but just to soften the edge of, of the leaf so that it doesn't look like it was cut out with a cookie cutter. From here, I'm going to take this onto my, my cosmetic sponge, or any piece of thicker foam would do. And using the Dresden tool, there's the Dresden, the fat end of the Dresden tool. Here's the thin end. I'm going to use the thin end. I'm going to drag it lightly using this sort of curved area of it, not the pointed area because that will poke through. So starting here at the wired end, at the base end, I'm just going to lightly drag it almost to the end of the leaf, but not quite. So I don't pull it off the end of the leaf. 
And then from here, I'm going to hold it secure and give it just a little bit of a pinch, just to give it more of a little bit of an oval look to it. Now I want to dry this on some foil. So I have a little pop-up sheet of foil here that I've crinkled up, and I'll press it onto this foil so that it dries in different, different shapes. You can see I have a few drawing here as we, as we go. Let me do a small one. Here's the tiny little leaf. And I'm just going to come in just a little bit more so you can see. How's that? Using my 28 gauge wire, I'm going to dip it in my gum glue, just a little bit, wipe off the excess. I'm going to insert it into that pointed end, about halfway up, which is not much. Pinch it to secure it. And then using my veiner, I'm going to set it down. I'm just going to vein this one side this time. I'll press down. And you see it made the leaf a bit bigger. There's the nice vein side. Now for this one, because it's so tiny, I'm going to use a smaller cell stick. It's a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to make a little bit of a drag here just to soften it up. Flipping it over, it's flat side up, so the nice veining is, is facing me. I'm going to use the narrow end of the of my Dresden veining tool and drag it almost to the end but not quite and then give it a little bit of a pinch just to give it a more oval look. So you need about six leaves for each flower. It's always nice to have more of the larger leaves when you're making the flower. So if you can make as many leaves as you can stand and then we'll color them up with this pretty coloring. paint the leaves, I'm going to use moss green and white. I'm going to use white for a matte white, just a plain white. It's not luminescent at all. I'll use my small paintbrush, dump a little bit into a dish, and then I have some clear alcohol here. This is vodka, but you could use lemon extract, you could use orange extract, they would work. You could use gin, eau de vie, and I have vodka on hand, so that's what I'm using. I have it in on a dropper because I only want to add a couple of drops at a time and then mix it up. What will happen is this will make like a paint and that I can paint onto the leaf, and then as the alcohol evaporates, it will just leave a matte color. Now, for painting the leaf, it makes kind of a, a, a V shape starting at the back of the, at the end of the, the leaf. So I'm going to start at that point there and make kind of like a little V like there. And then I'm going to work my way down to the end of the leaf, to the base of the leaf. Because these are small flowers, it doesn't have to be a big V. Okay. So you can see how that looks just a little bit transparent. As the alcohol evaporates, it'll get a little bit thicker. So I can come back and go over it again. You can see that looks a little bit better. Now that I have the white center colored onto my leaves. I'm ready to add the and green. And I'm using a moss green, which is kind of a dark green. You can see, but any kind of darkish green just to um, give some, some contrast would be good. I'm going to dab a little bit onto my angled brush. It's narrow. It's narrow through there and then flat light and flat through there, which will be great for my purposes. I'm going to knock a little bit of the extra off here. And here's my test piece. So what I want to do is kind of brush on there. And you can see it's kind of covering up that white a little bit. So it's not so white looking. I'll do another piece. 
so it's not so so white looking, which is what I'm after. That's what so I'm after. I'll start here. Dab off a little bit of the extra on my paper toweling, and I'm just going to swipe down the center. Wherever you hit first, it's going to give the darkest color. So now you can see how it's darkened through there, and then I'm just going to use the angled part of the brush on the flat side to angle in the color. And I'm starting from the outer edge of the leaf in towards the center. Don't feel like you have to get the whole thing covered completely. It actually looks better if there are variations in color on your leaf. Some parts are darker than others. And I'll go back and intentionally darken up. So I would do this area. on all my leaves. Here's a small leaf. That won't take long, will it? Just a small leaf. And you want to be careful with these smaller leaves because they'll break if I, if I press too hard. They'll break. So I kind of support it with my finger so they won't break. And brush in a light brush. But here again, I'm going to knock off a little bit of the excess. Sweep down the center to, to give that center vein a good definition. And then just brush in towards the center a little bit for the leaves. I paint for the clover, I paint all the leaves individually before I put them together. I don't do that for a lot of flowers, but for this one I feel like it needs it. Also the calyx needs a little bit of green on it. And not a lot, on, and again I don't cover the whole thing, I actually just go after the tips. The tips of the calyx are, are what I'll grab with color. And the angled brush is good for that if you wanted to get a little bit closer. Onto the calyx, and then up into the flower if you want it to. Now I'm going to use some floral tape to tie it all together. This is a Wilton brand. It's kind of a mossy green, and it's a full width floral tape. I want this to be a half width so that it doesn't make my stems bulky. There's a couple of ways to do this. The first way is you can take a length, about a 15 inch length of tape, cut it off, and then gently, without stretching it, because stretching it will release the glue, I'm going to fold it almost in half, leaving just a little bit of a tail here at one end. Then I'll fold it in half again. And one more time. I'm trying to keep those edges kind of lined up as you go. So one more time. I'm going to pinch it to get it flat there. And then I'll take my scissors and cut it in half. And what that will do, now I'll peel it away, again without trying to stretch it, is that will give me a half width floral tape. And I get a double section out of it, because I did two, and this makes kind of a nice procedure. Or you can use this cell shredder, where you put your tape into the slot and spin it all the way around, and it'll cut your tape in half for you. It's a really useful gadget. I, I highly recommend it. And so it gives you a nice half width floral tape. So here I have a length of half width floral tape. And now I'm going to start by wiring my leaves together. And to release the glue, there's glue on both sides, so there's no front and back. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to give the the tape a little bit of a stretch to release the glue. And then I'm going to put my leaves together, bending them back slightly. Now when you bend them back slightly, try not to hold them right at the edge of the leaf. Try to hold down where the wire is inserted, and that way you're less likely to break it. The clover leaves grow in bunches of three, so I'm going to get them three together. And what I'm going to do, because I do want it to slide right up against the base of the leaf, is I'm going to 
take it about an inch and a half down, hold it and spin the wires so that the wire, the tape wraps around the wire. Now, if you're if you're nervous about doing this, you're new to do this. What I really what I recommend is that you take the tape, fold it over once, and then wrap it around like that, and that'll give you a nice secure spot. It's not as tight, you can see, but it's a good. It's better than losing it all, right? So then you spin it just a couple little times, and then slide. Hold the wires in your in one hand and slide the tape up against the base of the leaves in your other hand. Now if you'll see, I'm angling the tape towards the end of the wires. And that way, when I start to spin it, I'm spinning them, then the tape glides down the length of the wire. Like so. And I'm making this look easy because I've been doing it for many years. So it is kind of a fumbly thing in the beginning, and just give yourself a little time. <clears throat> Here's my flower, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to slide it up there. So I'm going to take my tape, and so what, I, what I do since I've been doing this as a while is I'll fold it over, make sure it's stretched, spin it a couple of times, and it does catch for me, and then slide it up, being careful of that calyx and then wire down. So you can see I'm angling the tape down towards the end of the wire. If I didn't do that, if I kept it kind of straight out like this, then that would make it very bulky. It wouldn't go down the length as quickly and it would make the stem fairly bulky. So by doing this and keeping a tight hold, I'm holding tight onto the tape and I'm holding um, tight onto the wire and moving my finger down the wire as I go down the length of the tape. Like that. And then add the three leaves here. Add three leaves and I add these right onto the central wire. and I can attach them right next to the base of the leaf. All the way down. Like that. And then while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and add my three leaves in. And there we have a stem of clover. So I have my sprigs put together. As I mentioned before, I'm saving out some of my moss green just to brush up onto the floral tape and into the leaves. To kind of blend it so that it looks more unified floral tape, because it's got a little bit of stickiness to it, will absorb some of the color. So you can make it blend a little bit better. And then if you need any little touch-ups on your calyx, you can do it here as well. It's blending up. I like this little step. It just makes it feel like it's more unified as I brush up. Okay. So here I have a steamer, and the steam you can probably can't see it. It's got some some heat coming out of it. And this is the last thing that I'm going to do before I arrange the flowers. Is I'll take my flower and just wave it in front of the steam for a couple of seconds. And what this does is slightly melt the gum paste, as you can see that, and sets the color in there. 
takes away sort of the matted look to the flower and gives it almost a glisteny, glossy look. You don't need to do this for too long. And you can see how it's taken on just a little bit more of a shine. And this will just take a minute to dry. And I'll do this with all my flowers. Now if you don't have a steamer, you can use a teapot, a tea kettle. Just be sure you don't, you're careful with it because you don't want to burn yourself. Arranging the clover is our last step. I have all my pieces here. A cute little vase shaped like a boot, like a little spring boot. What I'm going to do is start with my highest point first. So I'm going to stick the piece that I want to be, and I think it's going to be this one, in its highest point and work my way down. I don't have a lot, so what I'm going to do is kind of keep them clustered together. Now to get them down in, the tweezers really help push down into the, the styrofoam. So I'll just keep adding pieces. Now this one, I've got a really long stem on there, so I'll use my wire cutters to kind of clip a little bit of that extra wire away. And clover goes in all directions. So I'm going to have it kind of flying out in every which away. Down in. This is a nice one. It's got two pieces on it. So I think I want it to be sort of front and front and center here. There we go. Draping over the front. I think that looks really cute. And then I'm gonna take one more. Give it a little bit fuller look here in the center. Then I'll start to work myself a little bit lower. Dangling over. And I've got one more here. And then once I have them all in, then I can go back and tweezers are a nice idea, but fingers work too if you're careful to sort of rearrange the leaves so that they're in a position that's most flattering to the arrangement. And here's where you can really spend a lot of time, or I do, just playing around with it, playing around with the arrangement. Knowing that there's no right or wrong, it's all in how it looks to you and how you want it to look. So here's our arrangement. Hope you can see. I hope you'll make some clover. And if you do, I hope you'll send me a picture of it. Email me a picture. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching.